Hey everyone, welcome back to my E3 2021 Day 2 Recap for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I'll be honest with all of you, Day 2 started out very dry for the Nintendo Switch and I was actually worried we might not have a video for today. But the future game show at the end of the day came and saved that with a bunch of content for new Nintendo indies. Now, if you didn't tune in to Day 1 coverage, just to let you know we'll be doing this in a rapid fire format so that we can see pretty much all the news that was announced for the Nintendo Switch in a very rapid format. Now remember as you're watching this coverage, if you do like what you're seeing, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now, day two started with Xbox and Bethesda, and no surprise, no news for the Nintendo Switch there or any cross-platform titles. Then, later on, we jumped into Square Enix, and I've got to say that was unfortunately the biggest disappointment of the day. All we got for the Nintendo Switch was a reconfirming of the date that we already knew for Legend of Mana that was releasing on June 24th, and the only thing that could have maybe saved their presentation a little bit, which seemed to be like they were going to announce a collection of the six original Final Fantasy games, unfortunately turned out to be releases only for Steam and basically mobile platforms. So once again, nothing to see here, let's move on. Next, we had the PC Gaming Showcase. Unfortunately, once again there, not much to see. Next, we get to the Future Game Show, which pretty much saved it for the Nintendo Switch and basically has coverage on over 21 titles coming to the platform. Now, the first game covered was Grow Song of the Ever 3, which seems like a very cutesy world builder with a force working against you and you basically have to save your planet by rebuilding villages and all kinds of stuff. It seems very cutesy, seems interesting, it's coming to all platforms and we pretty much see what it has to offer here. Now next we got a game that seems like it would interest me quite a bit, Eldest Souls. Problem is, we got a cinematic only trailer. We have no idea what gameplay actually looks like. And that's a little unfortunate, especially since the game is releasing on July 29th. And at this point, they should have a pretty serious gameplay trailer ready. Next, we had a really odd concept, which is Dice Legacy, which is basically a city builder with dice-like mechanics. I'm really interested to see how this one is actually going to work out and play out, but it seems pretty interesting. Next, we had a game, once again, that seems like it's going to be interesting me quite a bit, Gestalt, Steam and Cinder, which is a 2D action platformer, which seems to have some Metroidvania or mission-based elements thrown in. They're also, I'm getting sort of a Castlevania-ish vibe, especially the Metroidvania editions of the game. The animation looks great. The action looks solid. I am very excited for the release of this game. Next, we got Silt, which is an underwater exploration vibe with a lot of creepiness to it. You seem to have to solve certain puzzles and whatnot. And once again, there seems to be a very strong resemblance to Limbo, if you want a comparison to the feeling I was getting from the trailer from this game. Now next we got a nice surprise, we got to look at a full level of the new Sonic Colors that is coming to the multiple platforms later this year. And you know what? The game looks to be shaping up pretty well with a nice remake on the original title. Now next we got a gameplay trailer for Kiwi and I'm super happy that we got a really in-depth gameplay trailer because I really didn't know how to take this game but after seeing this gameplay trailer I am super interested. It seems like a really fun time management puzzle co-op game and honestly if you have someone to play with it looks like tons of fun. Next came a trailer for Debt Run TV, which is basically a roguelite shooter. However, I'm getting serious Running Man vibes because apparently in the game, you not only have to win and survive, you also have to impress the crowd. And it is all based on how impressive you play out the game, whether or not you're successful. Seems pretty interesting, seems like a decent new spin on a genre that we're getting a lot of releases on currently. Next. We had coverage on a game that was already on my radar, and that is Super Magbot. I had it in my preview video of games coming out in June because it's releasing on June 22nd. Now, this is a hardcore platformer a la Super Meat Boy, but with totally different mechanics. Number one, you can't jump in this game, and all you have to do to move around is manipulate with your magnetic gun. Very interesting, very difficult. A free demo is already available on the eShop. Check it out. 
After that, they covered King of Seas, which is already out on the Nintendo Switch. It's unfortunate that we're getting these games that are already out, but I guess it's publicity for the game. They're trying to push it. This is basically a pirate life simulator. If you're into that type of game, check it out. It's already available on pretty much every platform. Now, next, we got another super interesting game, Greek Memories of Asia, which seems very inspired by Hollow Knight. It looks like it has a Metroidvania design. The only twist is you seem to be controlling multiple characters at certain points in the stages and to have to get through puzzles by basically choosing which character can properly operate the different mechanisms. Once again, seems like a super interesting game. I will be definitely keeping an eye on this one. Now next came the game with pretty much the most sarcastic title of the presentation, Happy Game, which is a really creepy puzzle platformer where you have to face all your different nightmares. This isn't the first time I was seeing this game, it was in a previous indie presentation and it seems super interesting, another one I'm going to be keeping an eye on. Now next we got a shadow drop, Minute of Islands, which is a hand-drawn puzzle platformer that looks extremely interesting. Now this is a game I'm pretty much going to be picking up over the next few days, trying out and probably coming back with a review. But if you're into puzzle platformers, this one looked really, really interesting. You can always wait on reviews since it's out now, but I would definitely keep an eye on this one. Now we jump to a game that is pretty guaranteed to be a success, which is Ollie Ollie World. Now, if you haven't played Oli Oli Switch Stance, it might still be on sale on the Nintendo Switch eShop at only $3, and it's an awesome 2D action platformer, all based around skateboard mechanics. Oli Oli World seems to be pushing this to the next level, but if you haven't picked up that first game for only $3 right now on the eShop, go and do so so that you're ready for this release. Next, we got Tales of Iron, which looks basically like a humanoid mouse based Game of Thrones game. It is insane, it looks like an action game. Problem is, once again, all we got is a cinematic trailer. Now you can actually look around online a little bit and find some gameplay trailers of what the gameplay is going to look like. It's just really unfortunate when we get these cinematic only trailers with no glimpse at the gameplay. Now next, we got a look at Akiba's Trip, which seems like a mix almost between a brawler and an action RPG. It is very anime inspired in its presentation. Don't know what to think about this one, going to have to wait till a release. Now that led us into Shadow First Champions Battle, which is an RPG card based battling system. Once again, not my favorite type of game. I know there's a lot of them out there. I don't know how this one is going to fare compared to the other options on the market. Once again, once this one releases, we'll get a much better idea of the quality of the game. Now next, we've got coverage on probably one of the biggest announcements for fans of the Nintendo Switch out there, or at least a subcategory that are really into the series. We got an announcement for Rune Factory 5, which should be coming out in early 2022. Now I know a lot of people are going to be excited about this announcement. I personally didn't get into the series, but nonetheless, it was a big announcement for the Nintendo Switch. Next, we got a game that did interest me quite a bit. Two Point Campus. Now this is a time management game, but with an awesome twist and a really fun twist. If you haven't played Two Point Hospital on the Nintendo Switch yet, it is one of the best time management games we have on the platform. And this seems to be a follow up from the same developer, but rather you're running a university. Seems very interesting. Can't wait for this one. All we got is that it was coming soon. And lastly, to round off the presentation, we got Conway Disappearance at Dahlia View. Now, this seems like a narrative-driven detective puzzle game. Personally, once again, not my favorite type of game, but the presentation actually looks quite stunning. So if you're into those detective narrative puzzle games, I do think that this one is going to be one to keep an eye on in the future. So that was pretty much it for the recap of E3 2021 Day 2 for the Nintendo Switch news. Now, personally, tomorrow is a day that I'm really looking forward to because we have the limited run games presentation to know what games we're going to be getting physical versions of. I personally am really hoping for a version of TMNT Shredder's Revenge releasing physically. Anyway, you can always let me know down below in the comments what games really got you excited for day two and what games you're looking forward to maybe releasing tomorrow from limited run games. And just on the way out, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you do like this, 
please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.